Hello and welcome to the We Crochet Live on Facebook. Uh, today we are here for Coffee and Crochet with Lee Sartori from Coco Crochet Lee. So just a reminder for everyone who's just joining us, um, We Crochet is a brand new brand. You can find us on crochet.com. Sign up for our emails. You can get crochet hooks, yarn, awesome patterns. Um, we have a magazine, a podcast. We're here on Facebook and we're here today with Lee. So um, Lee, do you want to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about uh, where we can find you and um, what you're up to today? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, my name is Lee and I am from Coco Crochet Lee. And a lot of people think that my name is Coco, but actually I named it for my son whose name is Conan and we call him Coco. So <laughs> it's Coco Crochet and then I added the Lee at the end um, to kind of identify myself in there a little bit too. Um, and I am a crocheter mainly, and I also design knit patterns. And I am um, a host on the PBS show Knit and Crochet Now. And I do lots of um, designs for lots of different publications, including magazines and, uh, you know, all kinds of different patterns for different publications like that. Awesome. It's so exciting to be here with you today, Lee. Um, so if you're just joining us, please be sure to follow along, share this video, comment along. If you have questions for Lee, please leave them in the comments. We'll get to them and read them off. She'll answer them here. Um, and because it is coffee and crochet, Lee, do you have a cup of coffee there with you? How do you I take do. your coffee? So um, my husband actually for Father's Day um, asked for an espresso machine. And so he's been making these crazy lattes. You can see it's very foamy. I don't know what it is. So um, I just, it looks I'll, good. I'll take it, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> if it has caffeine in it, I will accept and I say thank you. And then, um, you know, it's that uh, he's so happy. So. <laughs> Yay. Oh, that looks yeah. so tasty. What a yummy treat. It does. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> All right, so again, if you're just joining us, we're here with Lee from Coco Crochet Lee. Uh, Lee, can you tell us a little bit about um, how you learned to crochet initially? What was that process like? Yeah, so um, I went to university for visual arts and communications, which is um, sort of like advertising and, and graphic media. Um, and so at the end of university, I ended up having my daughter who is turning 13 this year. And so um, I had this little baby and I was just finishing up my university in art and I had all of this, you know, oil painting supplies and chalk and big canvases. And then I had this tiny baby that I realized was going to touch everything. <laughs> so um, as she grew, um, I found myself putting away some of my art supplies and then picking up things that were a little bit more um, baby friendly and portable. So I ended up taking a crochet class and I found the, the you know, application of putting color and texture together in crocheting was equally satisfying to some of the, you know, fine arts that I had learned. So I, um, I continued with it. And um, about four years later, my son was born and then I started making him all kinds of little hats and different things like that. And then I turned it into um, a, an actual career because I enjoyed it so much. That's awesome. I actually didn't know that about your background and how like based in art it is. But yeah. now that I know that I can really see that in a lot of the designs that you've done. So that's oh. really cool to know that about your history and your background. And, and we'll have to show off some of the work that you've done here a, a little bit later so people can see how that kind of translates into um the sorry i didn't hear what you, you just said i had um, a call coming oh. can you just the last thing oh you said? I'm sorry. yeah i just was saying that we can't wait to see some of your designs a little bit later in the broadcast and see how oh, uh, yeah. your creativity <laughs> carries through to all your design work so how did you get started specifically in pattern design and pattern writing what was that process like and do you have any tips for people who are watching who might be interested in doing the same yeah, so um, initially I obviously started by um, kind of utilizing uh, patterns that were already available in, you know, in our industry to um, begin crocheting. But then I found myself designing things that I hadn't seen anywhere else yet. So um, toys and characters and um, a lot of Amigurumi to begin. 
And then uh, from there, I kind of decided to start writing my own patterns. So the the kind of first stream that a lot of crocheters take is the Etsy route and the Ravelry route. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. you design your pattern, um, you post it on Etsy, and it's a really great way to kind of begin. Um, And then along with that, you know, you realize, oh, I have an Etsy page. How do I get that out into the world? So you create a Facebook page to go along with it. And then from there, you're like, oh, I need an Instagram page also. And it kind of snowballs. Um, And it takes a lot of growth and building and and time. But um, it's a really great way to start. Um, And then from there, once you have some established work and, um, you know, a portfolio of sorts of designs, then you can start kind of... um, approaching yarn companies and and magazines and different things like that and and offering your services to them in in whatever you know facility suits you best as a as a designer as a tech editor um etc so um that's the kind of avenue that i took and um i ended up applying to a lot of industry jobs because obviously i have a background in um communications which again is that uh, is like um, social media advertising graphics uh things like that so um kind of being a little bit tech savvy was an advantage (laughs) so um I was able to work for magazines and um uh you know industry brands like Annie's and do social media work and things like that so um it kind of opened up a lot of different doors in that sense Awesome. Um, so on that same note, can you talk a little bit more? We were talking as you we were getting ready for this Facebook Live about some of the other work that you've done in addition to your own personal business, um, specifically your work on the PBS Knit and Crochet show. You were giving us some insights into that. Would you mind sharing a little bit about that? I think it's really interesting. We were kind of talking about um, you know, ramping up for Facebook Lives, what that's like, what it's like <laughs> being on camera, and you have a lot of experience with that. Um, what's that yeah. like? Um, so uh, for a lot of the things that I do, it is um, a very forward facing um, industry. So if you, if you're able to, you know, feel comfortable posting pictures of yourself or being present, um, people are really receptive to it. And I find that uh, crocheting is often a very individual hobby, but now with the you know the advent of, of social media and, and and Facebook lives and things like that we're able to connect with one another in a really meaningful way so um it's it's really nice you you kind of have a community of people that are interested in in crocheting with you and it doesn't have to be so isolating anymore so I do a lot of Facebook lives um we do a whip Wednesday every Wednesday um, that we've been doing for the past three years on my Facebook page we took a little bit of a hiatus for quarantine to kind of re situate but (laughs) we're back with that um so that's really fun and then um you know things like that can lead to other opportunities so um I got picked up for the PBS show uh it's also on create tv and it's called knit and crochet now and it's um it's a show that is owned by the crafting company Annie's and so um, I've been on it for the past three years as a crochet uh, expert. And so, you know, you go to this big studio and there's lots of cameras and lighting and um, microphones and people talking in your ear um, <laughs> and people adjusting your, your hair. <laughs> so oh, um, quite the it's experience. Really exciting. Yeah, it is. It's, it's oh, very cool. exciting. Um, and I've done it. it. It doesn't seem to get any less exciting the more that you do it so the third year was just as exciting as the first um so that season is coming out this fall that's awesome I my oh sorry I froze for a second so I don't know if I froze or you froze but that's um that's (laughs) awesome I hope people can tune in and keep watching you on PBS and on the create channel um, it's, it's awesome to see your show and to, and to see all the work that you've done there and how you've really worked to build community through doing live events and things like that. So, um, if you are just joining us again, we are here with Lisa Artori from Coco Crochet Lee. We are, we crochet, um, um, you can find us on crochet.com. If you're watching, please be sure to like, comment, share so other people can find this video. We have a few people commenting right now, Lee, so I'm going to read off some of the comments. Um, Chris Lopez says, good morning and great to see you. Jessica Hi, Nicole Chris. Pierce 
Yeah. Hi, Chris. Um, <laughs> Jessica Nicole Pierce says good morning. And I'm sorry, I'm going to say this name wrong. Um, say is bias. I'm so sorry. I need to practice my name pronunciations. Um, says morning and Nadine Johnson. Nadine is actually one of our test crocheters here at, at We Crochet. Um, she says good morning, Lee and Sarah. So hello, everyone saying hello. It's so nice to have you here. Um, please be sure to keep asking questions. Uh, Chris Lopez also says social media has made connecting with other yarn and is so easy and fun. And yeah, true. it really has. So um, we're really grateful for this opportunity to be on Facebook Live today, connecting with all of you crocheters out there and connecting with Lee, who's uh, on the other side of uh, the country. Well, even um, up in Canada, actually. So I am, it's yeah. great to, to meet you and see you from afar. So um, let's get back to talking about some of the work that you've been doing, Lee. Uh, you've worked on a few pretty incredible crochet projects in partnership with us here at We Crochet with some of the yarns that we offer. Um, the first is the Briar Rose Baby Blanket. Do you have that available yeah, to show? Um, I'd I love do. to see that. So um, the Briar Rose Baby Blanket is this one here. It's, um, oh, wow. it's a bulky weight yarn, but it's so beautiful. And it, obviously it has a lot of um, really nice drape to it. So although it's bulky, mm -hmm. it's very cuddly and cozy um, and it's extremely warm. So <laughs> I love this one so much. So um, it reminded me of kind of um, um, the Sleeping Beauty Briar Rose, you know, woodsy feel um with the the brown and the the pink combined so it has a really awesome mm -hmm. texture too yes and I think that project uses our upcycle reserve yarn yeah. which is um we have that available in two weights a worsted weight and a bulky weight and the cool thing about that yarn is that it actually is um, kind of upcycled or repurposed so we work pretty closely with a lot of the mills to create uh, the yarn that we sell on crochet.com and they work with a lot of other yarn companies as well and so they had uh, a ton of leftover wool that they wanted to do something with so they spun it um, essentially all these leftovers into this special wool for us right. and um, so it's only available in limited quantities when we sell out of that we're sold out it's not going to come <laughs> back it's kind of um, only available this one time but kind of cool in that it's um wool that might have ended up uh in the trash or in the landfill right. but now it's in this this really cool yarn so awesome it's a beautiful beautiful project and I love the textured stitch that you've created with that bulky yarn yeah. it just looks really really nice yeah thank you so that's much. lovely <laughs> yeah we'll be sure to link to that pattern in the comments as well as the yarn uh please be sure to check that out um then we've got a couple comments, Lee. I'm just going to interrupt our project sharing to read those, and then we'll get back to sharing some of your projects. Sure. Um, Chris Lopez is uh, asking you, Lee. Glad Whip Wednesday is back. You've <laughs> they've missed you, Chris. Um, and are you going to start your blog again? your video oh that's a really interesting question and um so I was doing this YouTube vlog where I would um kind of uh break apart what was happening in my week and and do a live you know chat about it so you know yarn orders and going out and um visiting other makers and and things like that or, or going yarn shopping um but since quarantine hit my life is so boring, guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> there is nothing happening. If I were to do a week long YouTube video about what I'm doing right now, you would be bored to tears. And um, oh. there would be a lot of uh, footage of me eating snacks in my pajamas. So <laughs> it's, it's on hold until my life gets like just a little bit more exciting. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I think we can all relate to um, snack time and crochet time, though. That's, yeah. that's really been amplified lately. <laughs> it has. Um, we also have a comment from Nicole Chase. Um, hi, Nicole. It's so good to see you. Uh, she says, hi, ladies. So um, again, if you're just joining us, please keep commenting, asking Lee questions if you have any. Um, we're going to keep sharing some of the projects Lee's been working on. If you have any questions about those, please be sure to ask questions in the comments and we'll get them answered. So the next project I would love to see Lee is the Annabelle 
Java tab in Stroll. Do you have that available yeah. to show? So um, this one is a top and oh. it's made of different squares and they're all different textures. And Annabelle Sava is my little niece. Um, so that's why oh. I named it this. Um, so I tried to kind of choose names that mean something to me when I can. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but I really love the texture of this. It kind of has a 70s, 60s vibe to it, which I love. <laughs> Um, but the texture of it is amazing and the construction of it was really fun. So it also has a tie in the back of the neck. Um, oh. And it just, when you wear it, it's just, it fits really beautifully and the square seem to fall in exactly the right place. So um, I could have made it all one color, but that is not my style. I really <laughs> love color. So, <laughs> yeah. so that's why it is the, the three tones. Um, and so, yeah, this one was really fun to do. I love it. And I love your use of color. Absolutely. I think um, this is a project where we can really see your really artsy, creative background. Yeah. Play. <laughs> um, and then it looks like there are some pretty textured stitches in that project. Are those like bobble stitches in those motifs? Uh, or what, what are those? Are, these ones are pop. Popcorns, I believe nice. it's been a bit since I made this one so I can't remember yeah. now but it looks to me like yeah. popcorns um Perfect. so yeah and they kind of flare out uh depending on what uh square you're making so at the top they're in the yeah. middle then they kind of go out and out um at the bottom oh how cool yeah, oh that's fantastic yeah oh I love that and that let's see I think that uses our stroll yarn so we'll be sure to link yes. to that in the comments also and I do really love stroll I actually have uh, actually yeah you probably can't see it but I have a basket of stroll behind me that I'm saving to make a sweater with also but um I just love that it has such nice drape I really it love does. Your use of I was texture. gonna say that it, like, it's got such great squish and obviously really good drape and then you squish it and it you know it, it still goes back to the way it was before so yeah um it's extremely soft which I really appreciate it's perfect for a top it is. It's so beautiful. Um, Nicole Chase just commented. She says, so pretty, but I cringe at all of those ends to me. Yeah, <laughs> you it has a lot tips? of ends. Yeah. Do you have any tips for that? Because um, that's always been my struggle, too, with making any project that incorporates a lot of motifs. Is um, I love making motifs, and it's so easy and portable through the summer to, like, take a bag and go with just a bag of motifs. But... Um, any tips for weaving in those ends or strategies on how to do it or make it more fun? Um, I think, I don't know if um, it was like a, a test in patience, but one of my mm -hmm. first projects that I had ever made um, kind of for myself was the Sophie's Universe. I don't know if everyone's familiar with that blanket mm -hmm. by um, mm -hmm. Deidre Uris, I believe, at lookwhatimade.net. Um, but uh, it's, it's every single row is different. Every single row is a different color and there's, you know, over a hundred rows. And so there's so many ends. And, um, and that one was really a test in, you know, weaving in all of those ends. So now when I have a, a top like this, I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and no totally big deal fine. compared to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Totally, totally. I know. I it's uh it's a, something I struggle with too. But yeah, having perspective on it is super helpful. Like if you've yeah. done something much larger, um, I think I also try to like work over my ends when I can. So like as you're getting started, if you can like work over that tail and you kind of like work it into the stitches, sometimes that helps. Um, yeah, I'm also a big fan of doing it right away and not leaving it all yeah. to the end. So as soon as yes. I've done a square, I'll weave in the ends and then continue That's on. That's such a good tip. Totally. That's such a good tip. Yeah. Saving it all to the end is often what will keep us from finishing <laughs> a project like that. Absolutely. Um, we have one more comment. Anne Goodwin is here. She says, good morning, Alberta, Canada, and I'm drinking coffee this morning. So hello, Anne. It's so nice to see you and have you here. Um, I would love to see your next project. Lee, um, I think the next one on our list is the easy cameo top in yes. Hawthorne Multi. Yes, so that's this one. Um, it's just a little t-shirt. Um, it doesn't look like much when it is 
not on, but when you actually wear it, it's such a beautiful top and the colors are amazing. So it has little cap sleeves with a little bit of a ruffle to them on oh, the edge. Cute. And um, when you click the link for this pattern, you'll be able to see the photo of it on. And it's quite beautiful. The, um, I think that the, this color in particular reminds me of turquoise uh, with the, you know, the, the peaks of color coming through. So um, this one is extremely beginner friendly as well, which is always a treat when you're looking for something that um, will be easy. Yes, it looks like um, maybe if you started practicing a granny square, that this, yes. this has some similarities. And so yes. um, it's a good, and not a ton of shaping either, which is always nice. Like right. some, of those, some of those really intricately shaped, oh, hold on, I'm getting a scam phone call. <laughs> The morning for phone calls during the Facebook Live. I know. Um, yes, I love that project so much. And I think we actually have pictures of you modeling that project as like kind of our Facebook Live um, promotional. Um, and we'll also link to it so you can see the pictures as well. But it does, it looks so good on. Um, it's a great project for beginner, beginners, as you said. Um, I'm definitely adding that one to my list. I need to get my hand on some <laughs> Hawthorne. And we do have Hawthorne in, um, I think that one uses Hawthorne Multi, you were saying, but we also have um, like Hawthorne Hand Painted and Hawthorne Speckle. So if you wanna experiment with uh, the top that Lee has designed with some different Hawthorne yarns, that, that could be pretty cool. Um, we have a couple people commenting as you've been showing off that top, Lee. Um, Blanche Silikoff Rosenblatt says, hi, Lee. So, um, hi. Be here and see you sharing your projects. <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, and then Autumn Wren asks, Sarah, did you make the top that you're wearing? Yes, I did. Um, I made this top. Uh, it's like a little wrap top and it uses Curio crochet thread. It's just, just a size 10 thread that you can find on crochet.com. Um, then Chris Lopez says, I've gotten so much better about weaving ends in as I go. I've been known to let a finished project sit for months because I didn't want to weave in ends, but I've turned over a new leaf. <laughs> so we all should learn from Chris. Uh, yeah, I've done the same thing, Chris. I think, I think we all have, but that's a lot of progress being made there. Um, all right, so Lee, do you have um, any favorite yarns or tools that you've been working with lately? Um, you were kind of showing us a work in progress also before we went live. That was pretty cool. Um, oh, so yeah. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about both because they kind of both relate. But um, I've been yeah. really enjoying the Chroma Twist from yes. uh, We Crochet. So they come in these crazy vibrant colors and um, the color change is very gradual. So it's not an abrupt mm -hmm. color change. So you can see, obviously, it goes from like light colors to dark, but they they tr the transition is very minimal. Um, sometimes you get you sometimes you get yarns where the color changes is really abrupt and um, kind of jarring, and and maybe we'll throw off a design. But I'm designing right now, um, kind of like a modified corner to corner situation. So it's, uh, it's obviously corner to corner where the variegated yarn, the chroma um, goes diagonal, but then I'm using um, Mighty Stitch, it's uh, the Wee Crochet Worsted um, in a bright orange and doing some cables um, along the way. And it's kind of creating this great graphic uh, situation. So I'm making a whole bunch of these squares and then putting them together. So um, it's it's giving me these wonderful like 80s 90s vibes which <laughs> I don't know they're just very cheerful and um you know everyone could use a little bit of a smile right now so absolutely um, I just I'm loving how they're working up and I've been using all kinds of different uh chroma colors so um the chroma twist colors actually and uh so this one is just a an example of one of those oh that's so exciting so um yeah. So are all the squares you're making, they look like that and they each have a different color palette or are they all going to be the same same color palette? Do you mind sharing? So we the, spoil the surprise, but. Yeah, so the background is a different color of chroma, but the orange is, um, uh, is going through all of the squares. Mm -hmm. So the orange is kind of the, the tie-in. 
that will be lovely. I can't wait to see how that turns out. And we, we were talking, uh, we have some chat time before we go live. Um, we were talking so much about how much we just love Chroma as a yarn. It has such a lovely yeah. fade to it, as you said. Um, and it's, yeah, it's so fun. I can't wait to see all the ways you're using it in such a fun and playful project and corner to corner too. So we just have, um, we've been adding to our learning center on crochet.com. And I think we've got some tutorials in the works on how to do corner to corner because it can be a little tricky if you haven't done it before. But right. um, but but once you work a couple of squares, it's it's kind of easy to pick up. Ha have you done a lot of corner to corner projects in the past? Or uh, I I tend to um, try to change it when mm -hmm. I can. So um, I do have a, a pattern called the lakeside cardigan where it's um, corner to corner, but it's a, a, a zip up cardigan and it has a lace um, situation happening. So um, usually when I use a very common stitch, I'll try to modify it in some way to make it a little bit different. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I love seeing um, new and creative ways that so many people these days are modifying um, techniques that are kind of um, have been growing in popularity and then someone always has a new idea or a new way to make it special like adding cables to corner to corner like <laughs> mind blown that's it definitely awesome. took so a lot cool. of um ripping out and reworking and figuring out so um it's been a really fun process i really enjoy doing things like that where you kind of um it's a little bit of a challenge yeah an extra challenge and extra fun um and and just kind of like a way to work our minds in new and creative ways, which is always fun. So I can't wait to try it once you're patterned out. That'll be so fun. Um, Thank you. We have a couple more people commenting. So Susan Kyle says, hi from Atlanta. Hi, Susan. Um, and then Nadine Johnson says, it's beautiful. She's talking about your work in progress. Oh, like, thank you. <laughs> um, I think it's super beautiful too. I can't wait to see how it turns out with all the all the other colors that you're you're working on. So thank um, you. Do you have Anything else you want to share with us, Lee, today? Things that you're working on? Pro uh, some Sometimes projects you're working on need to stay secret. But if there's anything else you're working on that you want to talk about, share, um, things that you're excited about in the crochet world. Um, um, I am working on that blanket right now. That's kind of like my evening project. Um, but during yeah. the day, I am full time uh, working around, you know, um, basically just writing my book. I'm, I'm releasing a book in the spring uh, with Yay! Penguin Random House. So I'm yeah. very excited. Um, it's a lot of work. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and especially being in quarantine with my family home, uh, we're all in our little house. And um, it's, uh, it's while it's a great time to write a book because I have unlimited time in that sense, it's difficult and it comes with its challenges um, because obviously, you know, where I live in Canada, we're still under um, strict quarantine and, um, you know, uh, the photography and the supplies and um, things like that. Sometimes there's little hiccups um, and we're obviously still doing homeschooling here. School is still in for, um, for Canadians uh, until the end of June. So um, juggling all of the family stuff and writing a book at the same time comes with <laughs> lots of interesting challenges. And so, Absolutely. you know, just, um, it's <laughs> wonderful and challenging at the same time. I keep, I, I've said challenging so many times because <laughs> that is like the, the, the mood <laughs> right now. It is. Yeah. I, yeah. We're definitely all in challenging times and it ends so the work that you're doing is incredible and you're so busy and we cannot wait to see your book. I can't believe that you're writing a book and working on all your other projects and doing homeschooling with kids. It's just, it's impressive. It's really impressive. Thank you. So, um, and we can definitely relate to the challenges that come with doing uh, photo shoots during um, social distancing. Um, yeah. <laughs> definitely know how that goes here at We Crochet too. Um, Chris Lopez says, are you working your other job from home or not at all? Um, oh, so, uh, I think she's referring to, um, when the, before time, before quarantine, I worked a yeah. desk job as a city employee, um, just to, oh. I'm putting my husband through university right now. 
so um, my husband is in his final year of university for mathematics. Wow. And so um, I work a, a part-time job for the city doing um, property taxes and things like that just to, um, to facilitate that uh, dream of his. He's, he's always wanted to go back and, um, and finish his education. So um, he's not working. I am working a lot. Um, <laughs> so, but I am on layoff right now because, um, the, the satellite city hall that I work at the, um, community center is closed. So, um, right now I can focus on just being home and being safe and keeping my family safe. So, um, I don't know when we're going to go back and, uh, I'm just kind of playing it by ear at the moment, but we're, we're doing just fine, uh, without it at the moment. Wow. Oh, that is, that is truly impressive. Truly impressive. All the work that you're up to, Lee. Um, we're really honored <laughs> to get the chance to work with you here at We Crochet and, um, and see all the many, many, many other things you're working on. It's, it's really incredible. Oh, thank you. Incredible. I appreciate it. Yeah. I love working with you guys um, too. You guys are awesome. Oh, <laughs> thanks. It's just a big, happy crochet family big um hug. <laughs> yeah air hugs those are becoming regular these days when you can't <laughs> hug in real life um so Lee, can you can you tell us a little bit more um for people who haven't heard of your work before um who are new to to your designs where can people find you what's the best way to support you and your work um tell us all the all the places to go to find the work that you're working on uh so um it's it's pretty much across most social media platforms. So if you are mm -hmm. um, a fan of Pinterest, then you can find me on Pinterest at Coco Crochet Lee. Um, my favorite place to share uh, my like works in progress and um, you know day to day is Instagram. So um, that's kind of like my favorite creative outlet now that my YouTube blog is on uh, pause. Um, yeah in the moment um but again if you are looking for um that community feel and getting together with friends and having a fun chat similar to this uh we do the mm -hmm. whip wednesday on the facebook page um and it's at 8 30 eastern standard time every wednesday so that's always a it's always so much fun we laugh a lot um and then there's a <laughs> facebook group associated with it because we often talk about you know what we're working on but we can't show it during a live so um everybody kind of pops into the facebook group and shares what they're working on and it's just um it's just a, such a fun group so um that's the that's a, a great way to kind of uh get a smile in during your week awesome well we'll be sure to share um links to as many of those um your instagram facebook things like that as we can in the comments so people can join you i think that's such a good point that um kind of joining in and sharing with each other over social media right now is is a really special thing and um oh montana miller asks real quick 8 30 a.m or p.m 8 30 p.m um eastern PM. standard time um and it has been known that one of my kids will um, appear and possibly scare me or um, come in and, and, you know, just want to be cuddled. Um, but they're getting bigger now, so it happens less and less. <laughs> so, but we have a really great time uh, during those Whip Wednesdays. It's really fun. Yeah, awesome. Well, I can't wait to join myself. And uh, thank you so much, Lee. And again, um, if you're new to We Crochet, you can find us on crochet.com. We have a magazine, we sell yarn, we sell hooks, you can follow our podcast. We have a Ravelry group, which is where we kind of try to uh, build on that community feel. Um, and then keep joining us uh, over and over every Tuesday morning at 8.30 Pacific time. We'll have these coffee and crochet chats um, with other creative uh, people who we are so lucky to work with, like Lee. So thank you so much, Lee. It was such a great treat to have you and to get to talk to you this morning. Um, thank you so much. I had so much fun. And uh, thank you to everybody that asked all those great questions. Yes, yes. Thank you all for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>